from Indie Streaming News Leader. This is WRTV News at 6, streaming now. I just want justice for Kinsley. I pray to God that they don't plead this down. New information emerging about the death of a five-year-old whom police say looked malnourished. Why the girl's family is calling for more accountability within DCS. I live about six minutes away, but it felt like it took me six hours to get here. A woman shot on her back porch, but the shooter was nowhere in sight. Where the bullet came from, the distance it traveled, and why her family says she's lucky to be alive. First here at 6 o'clock, rivers and creeks full of rushing water after the excessive amount of rain we've received this week. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory joining us now. Kevin, what are we dealing with now, and what's the weekend outlook, too? A much brighter and warmer weekend. I think we all like to hear that. We've had nine hundredths of an inch of rain today. The other factor, that wind gusting to 45 miles per hour. In this line, from around Gary all the way down to uh, Brookville Reservoir, there are some downpours, and you you may see very small hail with this. The good news is this won't aggravate flooding in much uh, capacity because it is moving quickly. Pea size hail, thanks to Kara Brenneman for sharing that up in Noblesville. So the small hail has accompanied some of these uh, showers and thunderstorms. They'll fade away this evening. Sun will begin to uh, calm the wind once the sun sets, then the wind calms down and we emerge to this for your Saturday, warmer, dry and with sunshine. Right now, an investigation is underway into a deadly plane crash in the northwest part of Tippecanoe County. The Tippecanoe County Sheriff's Office says they got a call around 3.30 this afternoon about a possible crash that happened around 8 Thursday evening. When first responders arrived, they found wreckage and one person dead. They say the FAA will now take over the investigation. We don't know what caused the crash or the name of the person killed. Tonight, disturbing new details about what a five-year-old girl girl allegedly went through before she died. Court documents say the child was kept in a closet for most of the day with food on the ground and feces on the walls. Police are calling it neglect. WRTV's Rachel Wilkerson shows us why the girl's extended family is furious with DCS. If the parents aren't going to love and protect them and the state's not, who's going to protect them? <laughs> Flowers, balloons, and a card saying forever five, always in our hearts, baby Kinsley, sit outside the southwest side home she was found in. Metro police say the five-year-old was unresponsive, thin, with sunken eyes, and had feces on her feet and in her hair. Riley Hospital reports Kinsley was so malnourished, she weighed more at two and a half years old than at five. Traumatized, right? Terrific. Uh, words can't describe the feelings. Yeah. They're guilty to eat sometimes. Grandparents Trisha and Brian Welty say the warning signs of Kinsley's health were reported, but say the Department of Child Services let them down. We just don't want her death to be in vain. We want change. We don't want any more kids to have to die because of the failure of the system. It's not right. She was in our home and she was safe and she was loved and she was handed back to her abuser, and she's not here anymore. The Welty say Kinsley temporarily lived with them twice after other reports of mistreatment. In 2018, her mother, Tony McClure, was formally charged with neglect when Kinsley was just a baby. The officer said the home was in one of the worst conditions he'd ever seen and noted a three-week-old that appeared to be malnourished. Her mother served 21 days in jail for that case. When she came to us the second time, she was bruised from head to toe. She had clumps of hair, of missing. hair missing throughout her whole head. And she was given back. And she had already tried to starve her to death when she was three weeks old. <laughs> and they gave her back. Following a welfare check in 2021, the grandparents say they were fearful Kinsley would die. I pleaded, pleaded with DCS before that court case. My concerns about all that, every bit of it, and I was ignored. According to police reports, the mother says just before Kinsley died, DCS was at the house but didn't see Kinsley. McClure says Kinsley frequently expressed that she wanted more food or that she was thirsty, but says she had a desire for her to be out of her life. 
The Welties want DCS to improve its reunification process. Your priority should be the children, their safety. It shouldn't be getting them back if the parent's not the safe person and they failed her. I just want justice for Kinsley. I pray to God that they don't plead this down. I pray every charge sticks. Rachel Wilkerson, WRTV. Well, we have reached out to DCS over the past couple of days for comment, but a law that took effect in 2019 prevents the agency from re from releasing records on a child's death until after the criminal case is resolved. If you suspect a child is being abused or neglected, you are asked to call the Indiana Department of Child Services. That number's on your screen now. It's 1-800-800-5556. But if it is an emergency situation, you should call 911. With this being Child Abuse Prevention Awareness Month, we're hoping that it will bring more awareness so that way people can contact the police, contact others who can help, our, help protect our youth who can't protect themselves. IAPD says warning signs of abuse and neglect you can look out for include poor hygiene, suspicious injuries, malnourishment, excessive fatigue, and aggressive or withdrawn behaviors. IMPD detectives are trying to find the witnesses to a shooting that killed a teenager. It happened on the city's north side around 8.30 Thursday night. Officers were called to West 25th Street near Paris Avenue. They found the body of 16-year-old Keith Lewis Ray in the road. A short time later, another person showed up with injuries to Methodist Hospital. Right now, investigators believe the cases are related and are working to identify a suspect. So far in 2024, there have been 56 homicides in Indianapolis, and that includes one victim who's under the age of 18, which is the 16 year old we just reported on. Last year at this time, there had been 65 homicides, including 12 victims under 18. One person is hurt after a shooting on the west side of Indianapolis. It happened this afternoon near a business off of Rockville Road and West Washington Street. IMPD says the victim was awake and breathing and stable. There's no word yet about a possible suspect in this case or the circumstances surrounding the shooting. A Hendricks County woman who was experiencing the eclipse on her back porch is now recovering from a gunshot wound. She says the shooter was nowhere in sight. WRTV's Adam Schum shows us what happened and just how far the bullet that hit her traveled. This is 70 year old Roxanne Neff. Should not be here. She's lucky to be here. The Hendricks County Sheriff's Office says on Monday she was shot in the arm. Her family says it was while she was watching the eclipse from her back porch. My first thought was where'd it come from? Who did it? Deputies say a Brownsburg man was target shooting at the time of the incident. The investigation shows the bullet that hit Neff was fired from about 4,400 feet away. That's about eight tenths of a mile. It's insane to think that um, the way they tell the story that they're target shooting um, with the terrain and the elevation differences, there's not a chance that bullet made it 4,400 feet if they were not being reckless. On this day, Roxanne is at home recovering with the black and blue of a bullet wound. She's still shaken and not ready to speak about it, so her children are. They tell me she's lucky to be alive. It absolutely terrifies me to think that my daughter would have been sitting on my mom's lap and that bullet would have hit her. Attorney Guy Relford specializes in Second Amendment rights. While he's not connected to the case, he says if you plan on target shooting, there are some steps to take. You need something that's going to stop bullets and keep them uh, within the property where you're authorized to, to use firearms. The Neff family tells me they aren't opposed to guns, but hope what happened to them will make responsible gun owners that much more cautious. I think you have to have some kind of knowledge of what you're doing with that gun and be safe with it and when you pull that tr trigger you are assuming all responsibility for where that bullet lands in hendricks county adam shumes wrtv what a scary situation there well the sheriff's office says while no criminal charges were filed at the time of the incident the investigation is still ongoing i want to show you this unbelievable video tonight from the fishers police department look it shows officers trying to catch up to a motorcyclist who say they was driving 104 miles per hour on i-69 but that's not all the person on the bike was standing up on the seat while going those speeds according to fishers police Officers were able to stop the motorcyclist and arrest that person for reckless driving. The dash cam video shows this happened on Wednesday.
From our WRTV Investigates team tonight, a local Pepsi bottling facility has paid more than $15,000 in penalties following workplace safety violations. The Indiana Occupational Safety and Health Administration cited Pepsi Beverage Company Bottling Group LLC following inspections. The facility is located on West 78th Street in Indianapolis. The state found seven serious violations, including slip and fall hazards, fire hazards, employees not wearing protective helmets, slippery walkways, and cords and cables used incorrectly. WRTV investigates contacted PepsiCo for comment, and we are still waiting to hear back. An IOSHA spokesperson says the company paid the $15,000 penalty. More than 250 new part-time and full-time jobs are going to Hamilton County. That's because a new Meyer grocery store is opening later this year in Noblesville. The location is near Little Chicago Road and State Road 32. The new Meyer will need clerks, cake decorators, customer service workers, cashiers, and meat cutters. You can apply now. Interviews begin in May. We do have a link to the application process in this story at our website, WRTV.com. Concerns about SNAP benefit funding. Next at 6 o'clock, how the farm bill could impact people who rely on food banks. Indiana State basketball has a new head coach coming up here. How he plans to build on the big success the Sycamores achieved this season. Food banks across Indiana are concerned about funding for SNAP benefits. WRTV's Meredith Hackler shows us how the Farm Bill in Congress could impact those benefits and food assistance for Hoosiers in need. Donald Stevens is a client and volunteer at Crooked Creek Food Pantry on the northwest side. He's on disability and says inflation has made it nearly impossible to get all the things he needs. They're just, you know, it's far hard for me to buy anything because a loaf of bread's two dollars now. You know, I could get it for 89 cents. Now it's two dollars. It's just, everything's up so high. It wasn't for the pantry. I couldn't make it. And Stevens isn't alone. Since 2020, more people have been turning to food banks. Numbers from 2023 um, were up 100% from 2021, up 33% from 2022. So our numbers are raising. And those numbers could keep rising. Every five years, Congress has to pass the Farm Bill. It funds programs like the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP. Any impact to the SNAP program means that the lines get longer and longer, and we still see long lines. You know, looking at this pantry and a lot of other places, a lot of the folks in our network are still doing drive through because they don't have the capacity to serve people one-on-one. -on -one. According to Feeding America, SNAP benefits are calculated through the Thrifty Food Plan. In 2021, that plan was modernized and increased SNAP benefits for the first time since the 1970s. But a current proposal would change that. They want to make changes to the SNAP program and how the benefits are calculated that would amount to about $30 billion and benefits lost over a period of time by people across the country. And if that happens, food pantries say they will feel the impact directly. If we get more people, we're gonna have to reduce the amount of food we give people or find a lot more funding to continue to give people enough to survive. In Indianapolis, Meredith Hackler, WRTV. According to the state of Indiana's website, around 926,000 Hoosiers currently receive SNAP benefits. That equals out to about 16% of the population. Congress has until September of this year to pass a farm bill, and leaders have yet to say when it will become a priority. Young leaders from across Indiana were honored today during the Boys and Girls Club's Youth of the Year Awards Luncheon. It took place at the downtown Indy Hyatt Regency. 16 nominees filled out applications, wrote speeches and submitted letters of recommendation in the state competition. It recognizes teenagers for their outstanding leadership, community service and academic excellence. This year's winner is 16 year old Rima Bell of St. Joseph County. Rima says the award celebrates young leaders who inspire others in the club. I think the Boys and Girls Club is so inspiring because of their mission to take young leaders and and change their lives. Essentially, you're you're building people that are bold and confident for um, the future, and it's it's a really great program. Rima is one of the more than 100,000 kids and teens throughout Indiana who are served by the Boys and Girls Clubs. Rima won $7,500 in scholarships, a year of tuition at Ivy Tech, and will represent Indiana in a National Youth of the Year competition.
Cardinal Ritter High School is teaming up with Colts cornerback Kenny Moore for a new community initiative. Today, the school, Moore, and his Love One Foundation launched Rise and Shine. It's putting an emphasis on academic excellence and encouraging kids to come to school and perform well. Moore will also be visiting the kids on a regular basis. Anyone who knows me, I want to do things uh, continuity style as far as you know just going to the school consistently uh, building that relationship monthly weekly whatever it is and and then from there I mean you know I'm able to see these kids become adults or you know go to college one day and I think that's the real intentions that I have behind it it's just being organic and just wanting the best for them the students will have incentives and rewards for doing well and attending class. The Rise and Shine initiative launches next school year. Kevin? Most places did not have much in the way of rain today. There are some downpours. We made another small contribution that took us over six inches. Half a foot of rain now for the month of April. We'll have many opportunities as we get into next week for more rain. The wind today that's been so strong and continues to gust to 40 miles per hour will begin to calm down after sunset. Tomorrow, much calmer day. These showers and thunder showers with some pockets of heavy rainfall, they flare up, may produce some pea-sized hail, but I think the coverage and intensity of these will continue to diminish uh, between now and say eight or nine o'clock as the sun angle gets lower, but between Rushville and Greensburg, a downpour there, and then following from Delphi down to Tipton, and again just to the northeast of Geist Reservoir, some additional showers and rumbles of thunder. Temperatures, they're in the 60s, generally speaking. Speaking. We'll be in the 70s and beyond once we get to Sunday and next week. There are the colorful display of our winds that are so strong. 43 mile per hour gust here in the last hour in Indianapolis. Temperatures tomorrow make a jump into the middle to upper 60s. And then you can see how much warmer will be for the second half of the weekend. Lots of sunshine tomorrow. That's a change. The wind about 10 miles per hour and uh, the temperature hits 67. From there, we'll jump 10 degrees warmer on Sunday. I'll mention 20% chance we'll see a shower or thunderstorm to end the weekend. That's more likely later in the day, Sunday into Sunday night. A couple of those could be strong if they develop within the state. There's a better chance that those will be over in Ohio as we go Sunday evening uh, into the overnight hours. You see a pencil thin line of some showers and thunder showers. A stronger, more widespread storm system may impact us Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And as that winds up, pulls warmer temperatures into the state 78 Monday chance for thunderstorms a few of which could be strong to severe potentially for Tuesday and Wednesday hold on to the thunderstorm chance next Thursday Nicole WRTV sports tonight is one of the biggest games of the season for the Pacers. Indiana is on the road to take on the Cleveland Cavaliers. The blue and gold have two games left in the regular season and the team needs one win to clinch at least the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference. That is the final spot that avoids the play in tournament. The Pacers have won three in a row. Tonight's tip off is at 730. Their regular season finale is Sunday at 1 p.m. against the Atlanta Hawks at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. The Indiana Fever have the number one pick in the WNBA draft, which is coming up on Monday in Brooklyn. Most all experts and fans expect the Fever will draft Iowa star Caitlin Clark. The draft begins Monday at 7.30 p.m. WRTV will be in Brooklyn and we'll bring you coverage of the night's events in all of our newscasts. Today, Indiana State University men's basketball officially entered a new era. Late this morning, the school introduced Matthew Graves as the new head coach of the Sycamores. Graves had been an associate head coach under Josh Schertz since 2021. Well, last week, Shirts left Indiana State to take the job at St. Louis University after leading ISU to 32 wins and an appearance in the NIT championship game. Graves takes over with two scholarship players and one walk on currently on the roster. Several Sycamores hit the transfer portal at the end of the season. Today, Graves thanks Shirts while also talking about his own coaching philosophy. Thank you, Josh. I uh, you know, hope you're uh, able to see some of this. I can't thank you enough for the last three years the guidance, the friendship, uh, learning that offense that uh, we all so beautifully love here at Indiana State. And we're going to do our absolute best to not only recruit to that, 
but play that style of play. And, you know, it's an exciting brand of basketball that we want to continue here at Indiana State. In addition to hitting the recruiting trail, Matthew Graves is also trying to fill out his coaching staff. You may also remember Graves as a player for Butler in the mid to late 90s. IU fans sure love basketball. According to the school, the men's team drew more than 296,000 fans this season, which is the first in the Big Ten and sixth nationally. Meanwhile, more than 175,000 fans flocked to see the women's team, which was second in the Big Ten and fifth nationally. When you combine the men and women, they had 472,000 fans attend games. That is more than anywhere in the country. Weekend sports options you can enjoy with the family tomorrow at 7 p.m. The Indy 11 take on the Charleston Battery at Michael Carroll Stadium on the campus of IUPUI. Also tomorrow at 7, the Indy Fuel have a game against Kalabazoo at Indiana Farmers Coliseum. It's Fan Appreciation Night. It's also the last game before the Fuel begin the playoffs. And again, the Pacers play the Atlanta Hawks Sunday at 1 p.m. at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. It's also the final game of the regular season and Fan Appreciation appreciation day. We'll be right back. All right, a skinny line of showers and some thunder showers from near Delphi, southeast to just around the Geist area, all the way toward Cincinnati. They'll continue to fade as we go through the evening. And then sunshine for the weekend. Yes. You got Bring it. Bring it on. Get those showers out of here. We've got a little for you here. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Have a good night.